When you're first learning Ansible and you're kind of getting comfortable with it, you probably started out using static inventories. So just a file or a set of files that define the groups, the hosts, any associated variables that you define manually, and then they're just static files that don't change. So they look something like this. So in this particular static inventory, we've got two groups. We've got Apache uh, servers, we've got database servers, and then under each of those groups, we've got a set of hosts. So we've got the hosts that are defined for those servers, as well as variables that are defined for those groups of servers in this case. So that's a typical static inventory. We define groups, we put hosts in those groups, and then we define variables for either individual hosts or for groups as a whole. So that works fine in really small deployments. Uh, but when you start working with a lot of sort of dynamically provisioned, uh, coming and going, for instance, virtual servers on AWS, it can be difficult to keep track of which servers are which, what their IP addresses are, you know, how do we connect to them, uh, how do we want to manage them, it becomes a bit of a chore. So just to show you something a little bit more complicated than this static inventory file, let's actually do uh, this, this right here. I'm actually going to spin up a slightly more complicated uh, AWS infrastructure. So let's first uh, use Terraform here. So we will do an out file of TF plan. So what we're gonna do is just generate a, um, a sort of six server topology really quickly. It's spread across a couple of availability zones. Uh, it's actually three pairs of servers that are load balanced with each member of the pair being in a different avail availability zone and in a different subnet. So now we will just apply the plan. And what I'm doing this for is to demonstrate what you may run into when you're working with EC2 and AWS or whatever cloud provider. You may spin up a lot of instances and you may not know what their IP addresses are. You may not know much about them at all. So how do you actually manage those? Uh, you can't, I mean, you could make a static inventory. You could go into your EC2 management console and uh, like look at the associated information about all these different hosts that you set up and maybe click on one and you could get the, the public IP address of each one and kind of make this inventory file manually, but that's kind of a pain. So let me show you something else that's a little better than that. And that's a dynamic inventory, which is probably what you're here for. So using a dynamic inventory, we can it's a, usually a Python script that we can run and we can use it as an inventory file, but it will generate the inventory information for us manually or dynamically, automatically, programmatically, not manually. So the whole point is it's not manual. So what you do to use a, a dynamic inventory script, you have to find it first of all, and uh, it's on Ansible's GitHub page. They've got a lot of different dynamic inventory scripts for various cloud providers. So the one we're gonna be using is EC2 external inventory script. So you may have to Google it, but it's just called ec2.py. So what you would do, and I'm, I've already done this, so I'm not gonna actually run these commands, but you would wget, the inventory script that you're interested in. So in this case, it's ec2.py. And then you would also want to wget ec2.ini, which is the configuration file. And actually I will wget that because I want to show you uh, what the configuration file looks like. So oof, well, it's not the most visible, but there's actually just a few things I want to point out. And luckily we don't need to see the comments. So first off, you can specify a specific region if you want in the INI file for your EC2 uh, inventory script. So what I might do is like US West dash one by reducing the amount of regions, like all, instead of all specifying the specific region that you want to interact with, you can make the inventory uh, generate itself a lot more quickly. So I recommend kind of whittling that down to just the regions that you're using. And if we kind of scroll all the way down here, you can see that we can either include or exclude various Amazon resource, AWS resources. So we could include RDS instances or clusters or Elasticash or all these different things, uh, but we're not going to uh, for this. And one more thing you might want to do is actually not, um, excuse me, you might want to disable 
uh, certain groupings here. So things that aren't relevant to you, like elastic hash, you could say, I don't want to group by those. And we'll see exactly what this looks like momentarily. But you may want to like just set some of these things to false. If these aren't things that you will be using to uh, group your instances as you run Ansible playbooks. So just kind of check it out, see what you need, kind of cut out what you don't need, and that will improve the overall uh, performance of the ec2.py script. So I'm actually going to close out of this without saving the changes. I'm going to erase ec2.ini. And let me just clear the screen. And what I want to show you is actually what this ec2.python script does. Oh, but before we do that, there's one more thing you have to do. So I don't want to skip over this because this is pretty much required. So it's uh, actually right at the top of the ec2.py script. You need to export or basically define the API keys. So you need the access key ID as well as the secret access key. And the way to do that, you could go over to your management console in EC2, go to your IAM uh, console specifically, and then you can go to maybe just users here. So you could add a new user. We'll just call this Ansible2 and programmatic access. So this is going to be a programmatic access through the AWS API. And then you can say next permissions. And you might want to restrict the permissions a little bit more than I'm doing here, but for the purposes of a demo, I'm just gonna use the administrator group. But actually for ec2.py, if that's all you're using this for, you can really restrict down those permissions. And there's some Stack Overflow articles uh, that kind of tell you what permissions you can set. So ec2.py can list your available resources without being able to like nuke your entire infrastructure or something. So uh, we'll click next, not going to add tags because I'm, I'm going to delete this right away and then we'll create the user. So we've got our user and then basically we've got an access key ID and a secret access key. So I'm actually gonna delete this right away so it doesn't matter that you see it. Uh, but what you do is you copy each of these over to your terminal and then you can just say like export uh, AWS, what, what's uh, the first one? Access key ID. Right, and then uh, you could say um, is equal to do, 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 whatever you, you copy basically. So you just copy it in there, uh, you define that environmental variable, and then the, uh, the ec2.py script will pull that down and use it. All right, so let me delete that before I forget, and then let's actually run this. So I'm gonna delete Ansible2. Yes, please. So this is uh, right at the top of the ec2.py script as well. Just in case you're wondering how to actually do that, you just do export the actual name of the key that the script is looking for and then the content of that key, the key ID as well as the secret access key. So once you've done that and you set those environmental variables and you could do that programmatically too, like through scripts for instance, but once you've done it, however you choose to do it, you can then run ec2.py. So let me just run it and show you what this looks like. So it ran a lot faster than it typically does and that's because I've cut down on the things that it's indexing. So if we just scroll up, we get a lot of information about individual resources, but we actually get these nice group um, groups. So the different resources are grouped according to various traits that they have. So for instance, they're grouped according to the AMI that they're using. They're grouped according to the Amazon resource that they're using. So in this case, they're all using EC2. They're grouped according to, let's see, what else here? Uh, that's kind of relevant. Security groups that they're members of. Uh, tags that, they're at, that are um, defined for those uh, virtual private servers, for those EC2 instances. Uh, they're all grouped by those tags, which is really an important thing when you're provisioning your servers, tag them liberally because then you can apply Ansible configurations or whatever other tool you're using, you can apply that on a tag by tag basis. So the different tags, the actual names of the instances, if you've defined them, uh, the type of the instance like t3.nano and you get the idea, the list kind of goes on and on. The actual region, the availability zones, so these are all just things that we've spun up with that Terraform command. 
So we've managed to list out all the different resources, list out their IP addresses, and actually group all those IP addresses according to various traits associated with those instances. So how do we actually use this with Ansible? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. Just like you'd use an inventory file, you can say like something like Ansible, uh, dash playbook, uh, and then you could say dash i, so for the inventory file, let me kind of move this a little bit more over to the, the side here. Actually, let's clear the screen. Ansible dash playbook. And then you specify the ec2.py script as an inventory file. So in my case, it's under uh, tilde, which is the home directory, bin ec2.py. And it will just use that as the inventory file. And then each group that you reference within your Ansible playbook, within your group vars, is going to be pulled from what's defined on ec2.py. So just to show you really quickly before we actually run this demonstration command, if I do an ls, I've got group vars right here. So under group vars, I've got variables associated with the three different types of instances. So remember, remember I've got six instances, but they're in pairs that are spread across availability zones and their load balance as well. So one of them is associated with each of my cats. And I define those instances, in this case, according to tags that were attached to them. But you could easily do it by the actual availability zone that they're in or all kinds of other things, as we saw when we ran ec2.py. So you can define your group vars, even if uh, you aren't really, you have to know the name of the group, but Ansible doesn't need to know the name of the group. Uh, it will kind of get that when it runs ec2.py and it will group all these things uh, according to just the traits that those instances have. So anyway, let's actually demonstrate what this looks like when we run it. So we'll do ansible dash playbook. Oops, and one last thing I have to do. Uh, don't worry too much about this, but I actually do have a script on an encrypted volume here that will uh, that will actually load the API keys for me because I'm too lazy to, to like mess with the environmental variables all the time. So I've just got this script that loads up the environmental variables uh, for either Ansible or Terraform or various other tools. And it just makes life a little easier. So if you're working with a lot of different API keys, that might be something worth considering. Just make sure that you actually encrypt it and, uh, and don't make it like super available to anyone that might uh, wander onto your server. All right, so I've got my API keys. Now we'll do Ansible playbook dash i ec2.py. And what I'm gonna do is actually run this particular playbook that deploys the lamp, a LAMP stack not really a LAMP stack, it's really just Apache actually. So it just deploys Apache across those six servers uh, with uh, a very, very primitive web page. So if we run that, it will use ec2.py to figure out the, the resources available to us, what groups they're members of, and then it will apply the playbook based on the groups that we've defined, the group bars that we've defined, and the groups that are reported back from ec2.py. And you can see it's kind of quickly going through everything and it's done. So let's see what this looks like. So after a brief wait, those elastic load balancers came up and now we've got three pairs of servers, one associated with each of my cats. <laughs> so let's take a look at what the end result is here. So this is the first set of servers. We've got Aurora, this is my cat Aurora on EC2. And this particular server is running on AZ2. But if I reload the page, it's gonna go back to AZ1. So this, the servers are spread across, load balanced across two availability zones. And each of these two Aurora servers were identified and grouped according to a tag that I defined in EC2. So the tag key name was cat and the value was Aurora. And that was how these two servers were grouped. But we could have easily grouped by other memberships and we could have defined configurations and variables according to those. So not just tags that are defined for ins instances, but also things like the AMI that's being used or the 
the type of the server. So t3.nano in this case, but you may be using a different size server. Uh, the region, the availability zone, the VPC, you can group on all those things and define exactly how you want Ansible to behave. So these are all just different groups reported back from ec2.py. So what else? We've got Hulk, same deal. The only difference here is that this, these two servers were grouped into a different group because this tag was cat Hulk instead of cat Aurora. And once again, just spread across two availability zones. If I reload a few times, eventually it's going to reflect that. Uh, and then finally we have Lily over here looking very dignified. Uh, also, same exact configuration. And the difference here is that this group, the cat tag was Lily. So there's a lot of different automatic grouping that ec2.py does for you. I think using tags is the easiest way to do it. So you could do that manually, like through the EC2 management console. So let me show you. You could just go to your instances and you could select an instance and like go to your tags and add a tag. And you could say like maybe uh, server type. And you could say web server, right? So we could define tags like that. Or if you're doing the automated provisioning like we demonstrated, you could just define your tags in the whatever tool that is actually provisioning the, ser the servers. So tags are a great way to go, but you can group on other things as well. Uh, like I said, region availability zone, VPC, the type of the instance, all kinds of other things. So it's pretty cool. EC2.py just takes care of all those groups for you and you can still define your group vars in a group vars file, for instance, that's called tag cat lily or that's called, you know, us west, uh, us dash west that's one, just depending on which groups you want to define variables specifically for. So just to recap how ec2.py works, download ec2.py using wgit or curl or whatever you want to use, download ec2.ini, they're both available side by side on Ansible's GitHub page. And then you have to configure the ec2.ini. I recommend pruning it as much as possible. Get rid of any unnecessary regions, any unnecessary AWS resources that you don't need to group or, or otherwise um, inventory. So that will improve your performance. And once you've got that set up, you go to your IAM management console and get some access keys, right? Get your access key ID, get your secret access key, and export those as environmental variables in Bash or uh, in whatever environment you might be. It's probably gonna be Bash. So you export those environmental variables and then you can run ec2.py and it returns back all these groups accord and also the servers that are members of those groups. And you can just use it like any other static inventory file. So instead of passing Ansible playbook, you know, hosts.yaml, uh, with the dash i flag, you can pass it ec2.py and it'll just kind of like dynamically look at what your environment is exactly at this moment and report to the playbook and to, to Ansible uh, all the hosts and the group memberships. So a very flexible way to go. And it's also available for most, I think practically all major cloud providers uh, through Ansible's GitHub page. So it's not just EC2. You can use it for all kinds of other providers as well. So I really hope that's useful. I hope it saves you a lot of time. Uh, as you start deploying more and more servers, it can uh, it can save you a ton of time. Because right now we've only got these six servers. It's not, it wouldn't be the end of the world to manually define an inventory file for them. But imagine if we had a hundred or 300 servers, that would be a pain to, to go through an inventory. So this is the way to go. Uh, at least in my personal opinion, for most most environments, for most situations, ec2.py or any of the other dynamic inventory scripts are really great tools and they just make life so much easier. So again, I hope that's helpful and I hope you have fun with it.